Hello again. Um, welcome to another edition of Drinks Coach. Um, as you can see, we're on the YouTube channel Drinks Coach UK. Follow me on there, subscribe. Don't forget to ding the bell and then you get notifications. All the wines that we do, we have information on this stuff. I've been asked on social media about certain prices and stuff. It's written on the YouTube uh, information on, on the strand. So if you get click on the video and pull down, information will be there. Um, so uh, any other questions you've got, uh, contact me at Drinks Coach UK on Instagram or uh, Twitter and my own personal page, which is Vinesack. Okay, so what are we doing today? Bordeaux. Yes, Bordeaux. Um, now, I, I did a piece on white Bordeaux very recently. Uh, I'm not sure which which all of these are coming out, but um, very recently I was asked to judge a competition called the Hot 50 of Bordeaux, which is a very cool thing where we taste me and a lot of other um quite well-known and established wine tasters. Um, we taste loads and loads of wines, up 250 plus wines, Bordeaux are available in the high street uh, and sort of under a certain cut-off price. I think, I imagine it's something like 30 pounds or possibly even less um, to show that actually um, a, there may be 150 very expensive wines in Bordeaux, uh, and very, very expensive wines uh, like Petrus, um, which is thousands of pounds a bottle. Um, but there's also exceptional value. There are 6,000 winemakers in Bordeaux, and they're all, not all making wine um, that you have to mortgage your house for. Now, what I've picked here is three wines that have come out on top in the in the Hot 50, which made the list um, as best value wines currently available. So yes, you can buy them now. Uh, we have a Cadillac Premier Coat, uh, Coat de Bordeaux. We have uh, a Grave, and we have a Cote de Castillon, which, uh, which will all become more clear in a minute. Uh, where the most famous wines in Bordeaux come from, if this is Bordeaux, like that, that's Bordeaux, uh, there's this big estuary, there's a big sort of like plinth of, of, of land, which is called the Medoc. Uh, also, well, it goes out that way. Um, and then you've got down the Dordogne, you've got saint emilion Pomeron. That's where all the expensive stuff is, up there, along there, and a little bit down here in parts of Grave and Sauterne. But the rest of the vineyards, down here, Entre de Mer, along here, Premier Cote de Bly, uh, blah, 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 um, and Grave and bits and bobs everywhere. Those wines aren't expensive, um, uh, but they are sometimes made from very old vines by exceptional winemakers. I'm going to take the first one, for example. This is from 2016. 2016 is um, one of the greatest and most consistently good uh, years uh, f for growing grapes in Bordeaux for, for decades, decades, literally. It's one of the greatest vintages possibly of all time. And uh, that means that a lot of the wines are very good. It doesn't guarantee the wine's good. Um, you know, uh, somebody can give you the best fish in the world. You can still knacker it, you know. But the point is that it's um, a very, very good vintage. Uh, the wines are quite stunning in some cases, especially down the ladder, uh, which this kind of is. This is from a little village. If you go down the Garonne, the, the river that heads south from Bordeaux, and you're on the eastern side, um, about 40 minutes drive out of Bordeaux, you get to this walled uh, medieval town called Cadillac, Cadillac, the, the car. Uh, same spelling. Uh, I imagine it's it's where the car company gets its name from. Um, but Cadillac is famous as an Appalach controller in its own, own right for making dessert wines. It's opposite Sauterne on the river and makes wines which are quite similar. Maybe not quite the same prestige, but there are some flipping good Cadillacs out there. But it's also been given a status along that coast as an area which has particularly good soil for growing reds um, with some ability to age and so Cadillac Cote de Bordeaux is where this is from. This is made by um, Hubert de Brouard who is the winemaker at one of the most famous and most expensive source soil uh, vineyards in the whole of Bordeaux. It's in Santa Emilia and it's called Chateau L'Angelus Angelus and uh, their wines are hundreds of pounds a bottle um, so he's breathing his magic over it. The vineyards are 35 to 50 years old. Let's see what he's done. Oh it smells lovely and crunchy. It's like a red currant characteristic to it oh, I like that it's kind of young vibrant uh, the French used to call it precocious precocious Bordeaux because it has a still a smell of fresh fruit and crunch uh, to it mm. it's got a nice firmness around the gums we call that tannin that's the antioxidant property it makes the wine age beautiful balance though I mean that already with just a lamb chop and I'm all over it um Used to, when I was working in Bordeaux, I used to eat a lot of spicy lamb sausages called merguez. That have been fantastic. Beautiful, f sweet fruit from a vintage which is just beautifully balanced. Lovely. Right, moving on. We're now on to Tour de Calon. Um, I can't remember who's selling this. It's somewhere down in the in the home camps. I think it's some Surrey cellar or Hazelmere fine wine cellar, something like that. Um, this is about £15, pounds, as I think the other one was. 
Um, wow, um, this wine has more oak. Um, this is from 2015, which was a vintage which was pretty smoking hot. Um, I think people are starting to realise that some of the wines in 15 were too, it was too warm. But one of the areas where wines really, really succeeded, uh, and one of my favourite wines of the entire vintage, is a wine called Chateau Haute Bailly from very close to here um, in 2015. But this is um, a wine that, when I smell it, has much more obvious cask ageing. When you put the wine into barrels, the barrels depart a flavour. And this is sort of a smoky, chocolatey, vanillary smell, which can only come from charred oak barrels. Wow. That's a hell of a lot of wine for 15 quid, I've got to say. Big, dense, super ripe, luscious. Has a slight slick of kind of salted caramel butterscotch sauce on the end, which I really like, which comes from the oak. The oak is starting to assimilate into the wine. I think in two years' time, it'll be even more married into the wine. To start with, I imagine that wine tastes very oaky and probably quite unpleasant, like it'd be made by a carpenter rather than a winemaker. Um, but that wine... Gosh, that has a lot to say. Delicious wine. You can drink it now, as you should be able to. It's five years old, but that wine's good for 10 years. No question about it. No question. But I'd like to keep that for another two or three. Very good. So um, these wines are made actually very close to each other. Um, Mille Ange. I forgot to tell you the name of the first one. Chateau Mille Ange, uh, which means a thousand angels, comes from Cadillac on the East Coast. And literally, if you fire an arrow over the river, uh, you're in. You're in the other one. Kind of. So um, that's it. So uh, we've got wines here, which are a classic blend, which is of, of, of the lesser Bordeaux, which tends to be about half and half Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. In Grave, there tends to be a touch more Merlot or Cabernet, and in Premier Cote de Bordeaux, the same. Um, the more serious wines, I think the soil is probably slightly favoured towards make, growing Merlot, so they tend to have a bit more Merlot. Bring us on to this, which is the bargain of the month, without a doubt. This is the top wine from an estate that's been in the same hands for well over... 300 years, 16 generations, I think it is. And it's called Chateau de Pitre. Can you see that? Whoa, it's quite shiny today, quite stunning. Uh, and this wine is called Madame Chateau de Pitre, which is their top wine, which they don't make every year, I don't think. Um, but this wine's been aged for 18 months in new oak barrels. So they're chucking money at it because they're using their best vineyards. Um, a barrel costs a fortune, and you don't want to be putting just ordinary wine in it, uh, which they don't. What's wonderful about this is I actually taste this when I was tasting the wines for um, the Hot 50. Uh, and I looked at um, the head Bordeaux buyer for uh, the Wine Society and he looked back at me. Uh, we looked at each other and looked at a couple of ladies that were very, very senior wine educators that are specialised in Bordeaux. And we just looked at each other, what the hell is this? What is it? Well, first of all, it's from 2011, which was considered an OK vintage at best when it came out. Um, but I think has proven to be rather good. Much better than people thought. Because it, it, it came after 2009, which was vintage of the century. No, it's not. Then 2010 which they all said, oh, we were wrong. 2010 is the vintage of the century. Might be. I still don't think it is. Then 2011 came along, 2012. 11 was quite dense and hard and firm and tannic. 2012, uh, they really struggled. There was a real mixture of ripeness and unripeness in the grapes. And uh, some regions did quite well and some others didn't. But they had to get rid of a lot of their grapes. 2013 was pfft, uh, horrible. And then we had 14, which was brilliant in the right bank, I think. Uh, then 15, which was great, warm, then 16. So um, that was a quick pricey of recent vintages in Bordeaux. Uh, but this is Madame de Pitre, Cote de Castillon. This is, comes from, if you go through the super, super expensive vineyards of Pomerol and saint Mignon, going further and further east, just north of the Dordogne. The next thing you come to is Cote de Castillon. People are starting to realise that they may should have may should have should have maybe incorporated Castillon into Santa Emilio in the first place because the vineyards have incredible soils incredible quality and some wines there are now starting to really rock it in price um so let's have a look at this wine it's 2011 man this is 18 quid from the wine society if you're not a member of the wine society uh, just look it up uh, it costs about 40 pounds as a one-off membership um you just if you like wine you, it, it's insane not being a member of the wine society I'm just saying that anyway so um just they sell you the wine at cost. Uh, it is a genuine club. They're not in the business of profit. They're in business of selling you acres of incredible wines. And this is a good example of it. So 2011. Oh, so this wine's nearly 10 years old. Uh, this wine is made from mostly Merlot, about 70% Merlot. And then the magic that makes Merlot happen. Merlot's like tofu. It doesn't do anything on its own. It's like lift music. But then you add Cabernet Franc to it. 
and it's all singing. Da, 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 da. It's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, it's like adding truffles to tofu, basically. And when you mix those two things together, you've got the, the texture of the Merlot, which is what, what it's all about, really. And Cabernet Franc adds all the spice, hints of tobacco, like unlit cigars. Is it a nicer smell than that? I don't know. Um, hints of chocolate, things like that. Anyway, so. Perfect balance. The fact this wine is from a lesser region in a so-called lesser vintage um, just makes it, it just it, it defies belief that you can get a wine like that for £18. If I was poured that in Bordeaux, I could very well have thought that was one of the wines from the Cru Classe, so 61 Cru, Cru Classe de Medoc, where that's a minimum £45, £50 spend in a shop. Um, in Bordeaux, you can go into a restaurant and drink that for 15 quid in a restaurant. So it just shows you that Bordeaux does still have great value. And these are wines from lesser regions, which I thought I'd mentioned to you, not the famous regions of the Medoc or Pauillac or Saint-Julien or Saint-Emilion or pessac Lyonnais. No. Côte de Bordeaux, Grave, Côte de Castillon. Enjoy. <laughs> 